So if I wanted to be a esports professional, what is the path? Yeah. So I always say that there has to be some kind of natural God-given talent that you have to make it to the very top. I mean, that's just apparent. You know, it's not. I don't think anybody can just pick it up and say, "I'm going to work hard at this." There's not a blue and collar like you know. You, you have to have I'm, some level of ability. Like okay. your reflexes have to be, you know, above average or. Um, you know, the, the way you process information has to be faster than average, you know, th things like that, cognitive ability, um, hand-eye coordination, motor skills, all those things, uh, y you know, there has to be some level of that, something that contributes to your skill. Folks, before we start this episode, if you could do one thing, would you please hit that subscribe button? It really helps us out. We'll kick those tires and start that fake fire. It is time to camp. And today we give respect where respect is due. I had never heard the term codfather before until I had actually heard of Mike Hastro Rafael, Rafael, Rafael. I'm not sure he's gonna correct me on this podcast numerous times as I attempt to welcome one of the legends of Call of Duty, esports, and a co-owner of the Dallas Empire and Team Envy. Is that correct, Mike? Yeah. Pretty close. All right, that's pretty close, and that's all we can. You got it. That's all we can get to there. Well, thanks for camping with me today. Thank, you. thanks for having me. We are parked. We're actually camping in downtown Dallas, not a, a not yeah, a popular we're, we're, camping. Yeah, we're right in the heart of uptown Dallas. Uptown Dallas. Well, before we start today's episode, though, today's episode is brought to you by Laird Superfoods. Their functional coffee contains one of my favorite ingredients of all time, lion's mane, which may or may not be proven to make you smarter, but I can't tell the difference, and that's all that matters. So thank you, Laird, for helping make this episode possible. Look, the last thing you need is for another ad to tell you how awesome a product is. You don't need to hear how smooth it is. Or how it features functional ingredients like lion's mane. And I would never presume that my words could sway you into purchasing this most delicious brew. But seriously, buy this coffee. It's amazing. And it just might change your life. Without further ado, can I pour you a cup of coffee? Please do. All right. Very careful here. One day we'll tell them what the actual temperature in the bus is right now, which makes this all the more impressive. Right? <laughs> oh man, here, there you go. There. Okay, perfect. All right, and I'm gonna pour myself a little cup here. While we're getting started here, um, Mike, how's pandemic been? Man, I, w I wish it hasn't been, but it has. So yeah, I mean, it's been, um, I think like for me, like everybody else, you know, just wish it wasn't around. So, <laughs> um, you know, I would say, uh, personally, you know, just, uh, I've been very thankful. I haven't had too many of my family members, you know, get a bad case of it. Definitely have had family members go through it. Um, just, you know, hope and praying for the world, man, that, it, that things get better. Uh, but, uh, all in all it, it, I think gave, put a little perspective, gave me a little bit more perspective on life that probably was needed, you know, uh, probably, probably learned a little bit more about myself over these past two years and I probably would have in the next five years had this pandemic not not been around. What has the pandemic done? So esports, and I'm not gonna pretend to be an expert in esports. I was an avid gamer and I do wanna make sure we cover the games you grew up on as well because I, I was, if we had more time, I was gonna challenge you to Command and Conquer or Tetris or some other form of digital entertainment like that. But uh, how has pandemic been for esports in general yeah so uh for those people who don't know I, you know i run a, a professional video gaming team and we compete at the the highest levels of many video games that you may have heard of and you know for us um we were we're really in this phase of our industry now where you know there's this big argument are we a sport and and that doesn't matter right i mean it's just people bring this up all the time is not a sport gaming's not a sport it doesn't have to be uh, you know the reality is that millions of people are watching our, our teams play and thousands and thousands of people are willing to buy a ticket to come watch 
our, our players play. And so this pandemic has prevented us from holding those live events. And we were just in this very explosive moment, you know, leading into the pandemic, just before the pandemic, we were holding our team's first home games in history, you know, and, and thousands of people were buying those tickets and showing up and the crowds were louder than the professional sports teams here in Dallas, those crowds, you know, uh, even with a smaller crowd, there's just more energy. So we were really excited about running live events and that obviously was put on hold and uh at the same time the pandemic kept everybody inside right all these lockdowns throughout the world and gaming is global it's not you know baseball where it's mostly cared about here in the united states it is very much global and so gaming activity went shooting through the roof and so no pun intended yeah uh yeah no pun intended <laughs> yeah no pun intended so we have uh experienced a lot of growth in terms of kind of audience and viewership and activity and gaming but at the same time for us as envy gaming wanting to run local events for you know the fans that want to come watch esports live uh we had to kind of curb back that and it's been uh kind of disappointing that we haven't been able to give those experiences that we wanted to give yeah now you also made some interesting some content acquisitions i read a piece that you uh you guys have actually worked with and and brought on some premier content creators and actually are doing a lot of innovative things that some other teams aren't doing and it's kind of adapted. Tell us a little bit about uh, some of the partnerships you've struck up. Yeah. So, um, you know, for me, like I'm 38 years old. So growing up, you know, I watched television a lot, right? I mean, uh, in, and in my early childhood, the internet didn't exist. And so, you know, I grew up watching people who entertain me on television and there, for me, there's been this massive shift in kind of content creation and the media that people consume you know it's completely in this free environment now where anybody can go and create content and anybody can build an audience if their content is you know something people want to consume right and so for us um, it's kind of like this new frontier where we can go out and work with people who we identify as talent talented and people who we think people are going to want to watch and effectively add on this whole kind of media and content division to our company and you know be be a group that fosters that talent and helps grow that talent and creates that content much like you know the old big media networks used to be and you know i think there's a lot of room in that space for lots of people to to do what we're doing and create teams of content creators and shows and podcasts and you know a lot of this is centered around the gaming culture but we're expanding outside of it too into humor and chess with the botez sisters and you know reaching all these kind of smaller communities around the world that are still very large and have big audiences so um you know our our goal at envy isn't to just be an esports team but to also be kind of a, a media company at the same time creating and producing great content now Walk me through this. So from an industry as a whole, for those unfamiliar with just esports as a business, where is it right now in relation to the other, since we are saying it's a sport, you know, to, where is it in relation to other forms of, you know, sports entertainment as far as, you know, baseball? And I mean, are we still in its infancy or, but you've also mentioned it's a global market. Um, yeah, um, I think we're probably in our coming out of our toddler stage right now you know if, if i'm considering the whole lifetime of what esports will be and can be you know i think we're we're kind of in our let's call it pre-teenager years you know um we're starting to mature find our footing understanding you know how to navigate the obstacles in life and in our industry and in our business so um yeah, I think I'm pretty spot on there. And most people who've been around as long as I have would agree. We're still young, but we are, um, we're growing. We're hitting a big growth spurt. Now you can, it has not always been the case, right? But you can make great money as a professional esports athlete, right? Yeah, I'm the one that signs the checks. So yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> no, so tough. I mean, this just boggles my mind. Cause, and how long has that been? A re is that a relatively recent phenomena or a reality I yeah i mean i i really think that um over the past let's call it seven years or so that it really became a substantial career for a lot of people 
Um, I wouldn't say a lot. I mean, it's still very difficult to, to play at the top level. For example, in the Call of Duty League, you know, the largest Call of Duty League in the world or the, the highest level, there are only 40 professional players right now, you know, or maybe 40 to 60 professional players. Out right? of all the estimated, how many millions a, that of players? That actually get a play? job in the league, you know. Wow. And and um, that's that's tight. You know, it's hard to make make that cut, right? And, you know, other games, you know, that maybe have more, maybe have less, but um, it is at the point now where some, you know, their players are making millions of dollars, you know, a few of them are, so quite a few. And, uh, you know, our average pay is definitely in the six figures for across the organization, so. So when my mom told me about playing Mario Kart to date myself, that that wouldn't pay the bills, um, that actually still would be accurate, right? Can you, I don't know, are there professional Mario Kart players? Um, no, I don't know. No, to okay. be quite honest, probably. So, Pro I, no, but, no. but maybe not at the level that we're paying yeah. our players. And but you can, and and you can make great money. So if you want to, if how does and again, pardon my ignorance here, but how does someone become a professional and work into one of those coveted forty spots? Say that I just, and then also I'm uh, age wise, right? The average, what is the average age of an esports athlete? Um, you know, probably, I would say low 20s i'm not sure this the actual statistic but you know i can tell you our players are any from anywhere from 18 to 30 years old typically is that because you're not burdened yet with the responsibilities of life that you're able to do or is it I, i've heard rumors that it's actually your reflexes actually start to yeah um, is that true i think it's somewhat true but i think you can negate that with experience and smarts and you know there, there, there are certainly players that we've had play in our organization that weren't the fastest, but were the smartest, and you know we win because of that, right? So it's just like football or anything else. Like Tom Brady's like forty some odd years old, you know he's still athletic, but he's not what he was when he was probably twenty five, right? I mean he's still setting records, and if he if I yeah. found out he also was one of the forty well, esports athletes, I'd be very impressed. Well, it's because he's a he, I mean he's a tactician. Yeah. He's he's got just a second sense or a, a seventh sense or whatever sixth sense for you know seeing the field and quickly and you know there there are lots of things and aspects of that pro gamers have in their gameplay that I look at and kind of weigh differently, you know. So again, so how does uh, to go back if someone's wants this coffee's to... great by the way. Oh, just well. just wanted to. It has let you know. yeah. Well, it has. Some... I finally got to try it, so it's uh, now I'm like eh, this is actually delicious. <laughs> I was about to say it has mushrooms in it, but I need to make sure I have a context for that. Otherwise, this interview is going to be really interesting, right? Yeah, this uh, <laughs> this campfire might trip me out. Yeah, a that's too right. Much, man. You actually are in a you are in a video game right now. <laughs> yeah. So if I wanted to be a esports professional, what is the path? Yeah. So I always say that there has to be some kind of natural God given talent that you have to make it to the very top. I mean, that's just apparent. You know, it's not. I don't think anybody can just pick it up. And say I'm going to work hard at this. There's not a blue and collar like you know. You, you have to have okay. some level of ability. Like okay. your reflexes have to be, you know, above average, or um, you know, the the way you process information has to be faster than average. You know, think things like that. Cognitive ability, um, hand-eye coordination, motor skills, all those things. Uh, you, you know, there has to be some level of that, something that contributes to your skill. And on top of that, yeah, you have to be hardworking incredibly hardworking um, a lot of this is just repetition you know um, going playing these games over and over and over again and getting the repetitions in the game no matter what type of game it is if it's an RTS game an FPS game a MOBA game you just have to kind of you learn more and more every time you play the game and so um, software holds a lot of possibility you know especially these games where there are you know, hundreds of abilities and item combinations or weapon combinations and things like that so lots of stuff to consider and a lot of time that needs to be spent inside the game and so um, a lot of it is who's dedicated and so say i start demonstrating some track records of success do people do you find me if i'm a prodigy let's say for argument's sake that i have insane hand-eye coordination mm -hmm. brilliant mm -hmm. processing and thinking um, I'm just the next pro I think I'm the next prodigy. Well, do I get noticed or how does it how do I work? Yeah, look man um, I don't know if you watched you you played football, right? Oh, yeah, okay So Barry Sanders when you watched him run you could tell there's something special about right. him, right? Oh. You could you can I mean, it's just obvious because you're watching him do these things yeah. um, Same thing in pro gaming, you know, it's um, like we have a Call of Duty player named Shotzi 
and he's young and he completely changed the way people think about the way you move in Call of Duty, right? Or Halo. He played Halo and won a world championship in that game and then came over to Call of Duty and won a world championship in Call of Duty. So he's won world championships and two FPS titles. And he changed the way people even thought about moving in the game and just had this has this ability, still has it, you know, impresses people every day the way he can maneuver, you know, and nobody else can do it. And it's just like, you know, Barry Sanders or, uh, you know, um, Michael Jordan or, you know, they just had something that allowed them to break away and score points, you know, and, um, you know, that, that that's in pro gaming, too. And we, you know it when you see it. So are they competing in tournaments and you have scouts or uh, for lack of a better word, and you'll just kind of word will get back. Yeah, to you I mean, you I watch them. I mean, you know, right now, like I have a five o'clock shadow. I wearing a hat you know haven't shaved and you're camping yeah yeah but i'm watching you know i'm uh, it's because I'm, I'm working on the business and, and my role at the company but i'm also watching esports all the time right i'm always constantly watching so um you know our, our team operations department our scout yeah our people are that are scouting and our coaches and managers we're constantly watching to pick up on that talent now how is um all right, gosh, I've got so many questions. This is so I'm just so into this and fascinated by this because I don't think a lot of people realize they're they're prior to COVID that there are arenas filling up with people watching other people play these games, and it's just it's early as you said, early in its infancy, and it's only getting bigger. I mean, is there any metrics or guesses for like? Do you think five, ten years from now this will be on par as far as attendance as, as maybe baseball or any other sports? So the way you have to look at esports it's not just one sport right? right so the way you have to compare esports you can't compare esports to baseball basketball or football you have to compare esports to sports okay, okay? so sports is baseball basketball football right. tennis hockey golf you name it right cricket soccer the list goes on esports is call of duty overwatch league of legends rocket league starcraft you know, you can just sit there and name oh, them like Gears of War, Halo, um, you know, just the list goes on Dota, Counter Strike. I mean, that's that's esports and that's sports, right? And so every esport is different in the sense that the NFL is different than pro tennis, right? And their tournaments are different, their leagues are different, um, their crowds are different, their fans are different. And and that's the way we look at esports, right? And so you can't generalize esports, but what I can tell you is that there are some games that we're participating in that have these formalized leagues or structures behind them or publishers supporting the tournaments and starting to do more and more and you know formalizing the way we compete and present that to, to fans and an audience and i think that um, w without a doubt we will kind of be on par with a lot of these professional sports i think we already are in terms of viewership yeah in, in some of these games now you guys at at in your team, you actually are known for, I mean, I don't know if you're the only ones who do this, but in our off-camera conversations, you've mentioned that uh, you guys have a, some unique ways of even training your athletes and getting them ready and some of the, can you talk about some of the things that you've done to, I know a lot of people ask this, but I'm just curious from a training standpoint and, you know, because you're trying to get W's, right? And so what yeah. goes into that? Yeah. Um you know, I preach progress. So everything that we do in practice, you know, kind of from the top down is uh, about progress. So um, it doesn't matter if we finish, uh, you know, fifth place in a tournament. Okay. So long as that we go and make progress in the next one and we keep moving in a direction where other teams have to keep our pace or they're gone. You know, we're, we're going to win. And we've been super successful with that kind of method. And to get that progress, we do a lot of things that and give resources to our players. And, and, and it's casual. You know, we have a director of mental skills, for example. Uh, his name's uh, Mike. And Mike McCory will be just be there to help our players if they need it. Okay? It's not forced. It's not, hey, you need to go talk to Mike. We need to check up on you. No. It's if you need somebody to talk to without being judged about your mental health and yeah. your mental tactics or strategy to get yourself focused, he's there. Okay. Um, you know, we, we've provided things like, you know, uh, nutrition from time to time, like our the Dallas fuel overwatch 
team, they're all Korean players. So we have a Korean chef prepare two meals a day for them and they can eat the nutritional food from their home country uh, while they live in Dallas, you know, things like that. Um, and then, and then just constantly putting into the, the team in the mindset that they need to be kind of grinding away as a team in the game, talking to each other, communicating. And, um, you know, the time spent is the big one. Got to work, got to work hard. Did I, did I hear you say too, the U S actually also implemented, like, have you, have you found that physical exercise regimens have led to, cause I think you mentioned that you guys have actually implemented some of that and that is actually correlated with success in some level or yeah, the well, two are tied together. Well, you know, I believe in that. Right. But again, we don't force that onto our okay. players, but yes, like, um, again, the, the Dallas fuel team has a, uh, coach. We use, uh, we're, we're partnered with a company called future. Um, they are kind of a mobile coaching, uh, a high level elite coaching and their coaches will come in. Like, uh, for example, we're in the playoffs, you know, we had their coach from future come in and, uh, stay with them for a couple weeks and getting them physically prepared for the playoffs. Uh, but throughout the course of the season, they are typically mobile. He'll come fly in a couple times, um, throughout the season. Uh, but it's all, um, you know, stretching, um, some, some basic cardio, um, getting heart rates up. Um, you know, we, we've seen statistics and this is a Mike McCory one that when we raise the heart rate of, you know, an athlete, uh, you know, 30 minutes before performance, it improves cognitive ability by 13%. And 13% and is huge, right? That's a huge, huge number, right? Like that's massive. I mean, that is beyond massive if you can get a 30 percent boost in your cognitive ability by just raising your heart rate up to you know a certain level 30 minutes before you sit down and compete we're using your brain mostly is that why you were jogging around the bus before interview the interview today i'm i'm honestly i'm a you know i I, right now i need to step my game up i can't really preach too much but um (laughs) you know I, i i was an athlete my whole life and for the most part and i've kind of fallen off of that as i've worked harder and start paying reading more and paying attention well you're more doing more something things, healthy now you're drinking you're drinking coffee which dude, is this lots coffee of, is honestly amazing i mean have, i'm not i'm not messing around this well, is you know uh, i have to I'm give not, them a shout, a shout out they are they're they awesome really sipping on it so and laird have thing. you seen what laird hamilton looks like i've met laird one oh, really? time yeah i worked on a tv show in my early career called fast cars and superstars and he was one of the celebrity <laughs> drivers on that it was oh, like no. a it was like dancing with the stars for nascar oh no way yeah yeah he is so jacked and i think he's like 58 or something like that. and i thought if i can his workout regimen i was like this is it's like six hours a day it was awesome but i thought if he drinks that i was like well if i can't do the rope workout he does for two hours but i can definitely brew that in the morning i said babe progress we'll talk about a guy that was at the top of his sport you know so um he was kind of one of the kings of surfing right oh Started yeah for a long time and oh yeah so yeah that's right so yeah so 13 percent increase so i'm curious um does esports have um substance abuse issues like any other sport are there are there pharmaceutical interventions that people can do that will improve is there regulations around that how does that work yeah so um yeah i mean look there's just like any sport man like we don't for somebody like me or the leagues or anybody else we don't control what these players can we don't work with them 24 7 don't you can't control what people put in their body and you know it's it's all there's everybody's always looking for an advantage some people decide to find their advantages and but like you said maybe it's drinking uh, a holistic coffee right um maybe it's you know exercising more you know some people you know have probably turned to prescription drugs and things that might give them a perception of enhanced focus or whatever it is um you know and I, and, and and i think my my true opinion on this is that if something is harmful over time that might give a burst of you know uh energy but you know the effects of it aren't known or you know could be harmful over time you know we shouldn't we shouldn't have that really allowed in the sport you know yeah and um there's a big discussion about it it's ongoing it it, it keeps happening and i think you're probably going to see some uh reaction to that like more of a reaction to that soon and probably more of a stance on that from the leagues that we we participate in now well i mean if, if a 13 percent increase in cognition can render a massive competitive advantage i mean i'll be interested to see i mean actually one of the things in the the coffee to the lion's mane i'm i'm curious if there's like 
nutraceuticals have ever been implemented uh, or what they call a neurotropics where people are trying to take uh, mm -hmm. like I've read studies that cinnamon uh, lion's mane and um, turmeric and curcumin there's all yep. these different things that can yeah you know, but then you wonder yep. also if you're 18 or 19 like your brain's already working at yeah rapid speed right so yeah um, I mean you know it's like it doesn't have to be an energy drink it doesn't have to be you know an amphetamine it doesn't have to be you know whatever it is that might be healthy there are healthier options probably out there right oh yeah and, and i think you know we we definitely have started to look at those things that's why you know even just when you when you're talking about the coffee it's it's absolutely something i want to try more of right and um you know <laughs> actually this is funny um the, the the we provide a food typically a fruit before our players play at events a lot of events we and we i i specifically speak to our players about it um, bananas we are we we provide bananas a uh, couple hours before our players play games is that proven and to it's kind of like one of my secrets you know but uh i'll i'll, I'll open up about it um i'm not kidding we i have my our manager walk around with a bushel of bananas and so this looks like a have, scene from donkey kong have right? them available for our players prior to our games because you know it, bananas provide energy and clean energy you know natural energy so so that's in it i know other yeah so maybe like phase clan is using apples and hundred thieves is you know, using a yeah you know, like I, papaya I or jackfruit yeah or yeah maybe, maybe. <laughs> some strange like no, no. i thought you're gonna see some exotic there's this fruit the, the, and it's like a jack you know it's no, the horn no, no, melon no. from malaysia no. or whatever it's simple though we, we we talk about um you know don't eat a lot of bread not a lot of carbs Really? Wait. So carbs is prior to eat, prior to playing a game. But a banana works. Isn't a banana pure carbs? No, but but I mean, no, not a lot, right? But gotcha. is what I'm saying. Like, not uh, don't don't sit down and have a steak with a lot of bread. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, we're talking vegetables and fruits to get that energy and carbs. Yeah. Gotcha. But the bread, you know, the heavy, the, what do they call them, in the in bread? Oh, it's the like starches. The, the, yeah, the thick starches. Yes, yeah. No, totally. Yeah. Man, that's I should add a banana before this. I'm not a nutritional expert, but. You know, we've it's water, fruits, vegetables, light meals that your body can digest quickly, so that way your body's not focused on digesting your food. Well, that's so cool there. When it needs to be feeding your brain. Well, it's funny because I think the image is for a lot of like young, you know, especially when I was playing games, right? it's like you're having you know fast food and you're having just like snacks or whatever, you know, it's like Cheetos and stuff, and and it's cool to hear that you know, hey, like, what if it's like actually <laughs> behind the scenes, it's like we're yeah. down in bananas and. Uh, you know, like steamed vegetables, like broccoli or whatever, you know? Right. That's so interesting. Um, all right, let's talk a little more specific. We did get some fan questions to, to come in here, and um, there's a lot of rumors buzzing around right now because you guys are obviously the focus of, um, of all the big news in esports. But uh, there have been rumors of uh, a new playground arena, so to speak. Uh, can you speak to anything about any plans you might have to create the foremost digital entertainment venue ever yeah so we are uh we've been working really hard on trying to realize that vision for over three years now and um you know i don't really talk about too much publicly but yeah like here, here's the deal we're we're working on things that are years out you know right now and they're gonna take us years to realize and they have but i i can say that we're pretty close to realizing the vision of kind of having our own owned and operated arena complex and um it's something that's you know the vision is of an, uh, another world to me you know uh, i've learned a lot about this over the years working on it but it's it's from the complete vision of our our team our investors our partners and all of our staff that are contributing to this kind of project uh to create kind of an entertainment venue of the future that you know is programmed around esports too right and um we're very close to announcing that soon and what that looks like and i think it's going to change the the whole landscape of esports and the way people perceive esports teams as a business because it certainly helps our ability to grow as a business to be able to create these experiences for you know thousands if not millions of fans to come visit our location and get an experience that they can't get anywhere else in the world and we're pioneering that and so soon we will talk about that but it's been a very core part of our company for a long time that we just don't talk about because it's not realized yet. Well, it also speaks to, you know, you've said a lot that it's not just about building a team of sports. That's that's wonderful, but you actually care deeply about transforming communities and cities the way teams and sports can. 
and is this i'm curious what what's the broader mission why does why does mike do this beyond just i'm sure a love of you know video games and 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 the competition etc but like there's a it sounds like you have a broader almost media mandate as well that's that's in, with, what, included look, with this. when i go out <clears throat> when i buy a ticket to go see a sports team play here in dallas i love to go see the mavericks play i love to go see the cowboys play i love to see the stars play rangers i go to all these sporting events because i love going and i get that experience and i enjoy each experience for what they are right um, a cowboys game is definitely different than a rangers game and you know for me as a founder of a esports organization that's essentially running a an, an esports team a sports team i i feel this inherent kind of need to create an experience for our fans and for the people who love watching esports or gamers, um, I feel an inherent need to create a custom, bespoke experience that they are going to remember for the rest of their lives and always want to come back. Okay, and it's because I'm a true esports fan. I I watch games that we don't even have teams in because I just enjoy it, and uh, I love touring the world and meeting people from all over the world. And when I was a professional player and working with our teams. Um, this is a global thing and there's so many cultures that I've learned about and so I just want to be this big melting pot of global culture and bring the world closer together through these experiences that we can create where people who meet online can connect with each other in, in person and have just a, the best time of their life so um, that's what I'm dedicated to man it's it's really about giving um, kind of the gaming culture and gaming industry experiences that they can't, can't get anywhere else and that are truly you know part of the future that's awesome there there are some rumors too of some uh basically optic has come up in the news quite a bit too there's some <clears> rumors <throat> could you address <laughs> anything in regards to that uh well depending on when you put out this video i mean it could already this be video done will be put out <laughs> at a time met by your approval so. okay so why don't we just talk about it yeah okay let's uh, talk about it let's talk about it and you, you can strike it if yeah. If, if yeah, we if, have to. If the lawyers have to strike it. We're, so. we're in the process of doing it. Hector uh, Rodriguez, the founder of Optic Gaming, uh, and I have run rival teams against each other. This, this is your Magneto to your Xavier, right? This yeah, is, that's right. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I'm probably Magneto and he's probably Xavier. <laughs> depending yeah. on who he asks, right? Yeah, depending on who you ask. So you're, you are emerging um, with your arch nemesis. Yeah, I mean, in the game. But, at the, you know, we've always had this uh, level of brotherhood and friendship with each other. We were both... We're both sons of immigrant families, you know, both born in Texas. Um, we, in the early days, you know, worked with each other in some ways to help each other out. We, um, you know, collaborated on some things. Then when we had to play each other, it was deemed the E-Classico, you know, because it was this big rivalry in Call of Duty. And so, um, look, we, life short, you know, that's the way I look at it. And we... I wouldn't say he's Xavier and I'm Magneto. It's more of like, you know, we're better off together. You know, it's like two 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 people who complement each other in ways that, you know, I think in their visions complement each other to create a one plus one equals three. And, you know, that's the way we look at it. And uh, hopefully we get it done. And if this comes out at the point where it's already done, I'm, I'm extremely excited about it. And I haven't shaved in you know a few days because I'm working on so many things, including that. And um, I'm excited for it because I know that we'll do something really special together. That's awesome. Um, before we wrap up here, um, is there anything that you would like to communicate about? Because um, Seth's going to make this go gang, but I mean this will be you know bigger than any news in, that could ever be conjured up in esports. Uh, is there anything you would like to get out about Envy or you know any stories that you want to? Um, share that um, I mean you probably don't need press but we're here to help yeah um, sure like we we're planning you know a big flag here in Dallas but in the grand scheme of things we're gonna create something here in Dallas that we're inviting the entire world to come yeah. experience and so um, there are two airports very close to where our long-term home will be and we hope anybody from all over the world wants to come visit us here and enjoy what we're building in esports and gaming and continue to watch from home wherever you are in the world i'm curious uh, what's the relationship like with uh i mean just like any sports with the own are you uh chummy with all the owners of all the other uh esports teams yeah um 
you know, look. How's that work? <laughs> I, <laughs> look, I like to, I'm not, you know, your typical, like, team owner in sports. I like to give a little banter here and there, talk a I've little heard, smack. I've heard you do, you are known for a little a little banter. It's just, it's just a little smack talk, you know, and, and every now and then I, I tweet some things that might be brash or ve- vexing some people but now we haven't we have not lived in a culture I, I don't think we've had anyone who's tweeted inappropriate things i haven't tweeted ever. i don't think inappropriate things yeah, but not, yeah. you know i've tweeted some things that might rub fan bases of other teams the wrong way or you know journalists the wrong way whatever it may be sounds um, familiar i just trying to place there was someone and, recently who tweeted a lot of stuff and they're they're not in office anymore i'm trying to think too soon oh yeah yeah well I'm not, I don't go that far, trust me. Uh, but uh, but I, you know, look, uh, I'm wrong sometimes, right? I'm human. And so sometimes it's like, to maybe every now and then I have a bad take. Okay. But, uh, you know, at, at the end of the day, I hope that people just remember me for taking really good care of, of, of people who come through our organization and always caring about people and wanting to do right, you know. And, you know, sometimes your your opinions aren't met with the same acceptance you know that you would expect but that's okay you just gotta keep keep going and treat people with respect kindly and and i always do that i know that and uh, try to take care of people like they're my family so um, i'll continue to do that and uh, continue to try and and, and win tournaments with our teams and you know give the fans and and people who love watching gaming and esports a good show it's, I mean, what's the point of playing video games if you can't talk a little smack, right? I mean, that was the whole point of being able to beat your friends yeah. and then comment on it immediately, right? Well, you know, sometimes smack talk goes into goes a little bit further and, you know, it gets uh, it gets a little ugly. That's only happened to me a couple times. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, I love I love the guys on the other side that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into it with sometimes. I, I love them and I, I hope they're super successful and I'm cheering for them, too to just uh, win in life and, and be healthy and happy. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, this may be an ignorant question and may not, you can't be able to do this, be able to answer this, but is there someone or some group of people that are considered the the greatest of all time? Is there debates about as far as, uh, I know it depends on the game, but obviously like, yeah. uh, the Cod Fathers, you know, is that- Well, uh, look, I mean, so Hector Hector's team has won more, more tournaments than we have overall. We've won more, the most world championships oh, and this. had the best performance in the world championships. And so there's that. But I also think if you took like a snapshot of all of our teams, I made the claim that I think we're the best FPS organization of all time over years uh, because we've just won world championships in like, you know, three or four different FPS games. And we've always been at the top and been very consistent and making grand finals and all the world championships and, and doing really well. And we never really just fall off. Um, like some teams just are watching from home at the world championships after they've been competitive for a couple of years. It's never been us. And so anyway, you can make the claims here and there. Somebody one day, some analyst will put all the data together and talk about it. I'll leave it up to them. But um, that's not really my goal, um, to be quite honest. Um, I do focus on winning, want our team to win and be competitive. But it really does go back to um, I'll die happy if I created happiness and joy for people. And that's really what it comes down to. Whether we win or lose, that doesn't matter. It's all about creating um, a fantastic experience for people. Amen. Well, Mike, thank you so much for camping. Um, this is a shorter episode because, believe it or not, we are camping next to a Andre Bocelli concert. That's right. Which is coming on. Which uh, So we're going to have to get out of here. Um, I'm sure Andre's a big a big fan of us, you know. <laughs> but um, anyways, thanks for joining us. And yep. uh, folks... My coffee's finished, by the way, so I'm going to have to get one to go. There you go. We'll get you a coffee to go. Thanks for camping with us, folks. We'll talk to you soon. Andre, coming for you. Thanks for joining us, folks. If you want to help us out, and we're confident you do, go ahead and hit that subscribe button here on our YouTube channel. And if you ever feel like just listening to these, you can check us out on all major podcast streaming platforms by just searching for I Went Camping With. And there, you should also subscribe. Thanks again, folks.